and gentlemen, and welcome to the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host as always, Richard Tiemann. This is the always growing, ever expanding, award winning fan show. <laughs> Do want to thank you all for joining me on this Wednesday edition. It's a uh, special, special Wednesday edition because, as uh, has been the case for the last uh, several months, we've done BattleBots talk on Wednesday's edition of the Fan Show. Kind of a nice midway point through the week. Uh, of course, Wednesday night they do their re replay of the previous week's episode with the bonus content and then we get ready for friday's brand new episode so we are going to have a guest tonight we will do that business as usual but tomorrow is nfl kickoff 2018 i repeat again finally football has come back to the world for 2018, as The Rock would say. Can I get a hallelujah? Amen. <laughs> now, for a lot of you out there listening in uh, Fan Nation land... That's a really good name for a theme park. Should I ever get that rich and famous and I decide to have the ego to build my own theme park, Fan Nation Land, that would be fun. Anyway, I digress. Point is, is that those of you listening realize that we just got done with football and now we're going to start right back up again with football because the truth of the matter is, folks, is that you really need to broaden your horizons. You need to expand your, your football catalog so to speak, because indoor and arena football is really everything that you want from football without everything that you don't want from football. <laughs> I mean, it's like, look, I, I don't dub myself the king of indoor or arena football media coverage or otherwise. Other people do, and that's fine. I will happily accept title as the voice of indoor and arena football that's fine and with that voice it's my own personal preference and feeling of sort of how i want to be that that i don't bring the the gossip and the drama with me when you guys listen to the episodes that have the players and coaches on them we're talking football we're getting to know them i don't care about who they're dating, or what type of coffee they drink, or why they continue to get coffee from this company, or why they aren't boycotting that. It's just, I don't need it. You guys don't need it, and they don't deserve it. We're here to talk about things, and we're going to talk about those things. I get the question all the time from people. What's your end game? Would you like to end up being the next Scott Van Pelt on ESPN. I wouldn't mind being the next Scott Van Pelt. In all honesty, though, I'd prefer to be the next Dan Patrick. But let Scott Van Pelt be Scott Van Pelt, and let Dan Patrick be Dan Patrick. I want to be the first Richard Tiemann, the host of The Fan Show. I want The Fan Show to be the first The Fan Show. And what I mean by that is I started this to give people, you, Fan Nation, a change of pace, a difference, something that you guys had been wanting and craving. And I don't care if there's five people that listen or 500 people that listen to each episode. You guys know what you're going to get when you tune in three nights a week. And that is what you've wanted, what you've been missing. Talk about sports, football nonsense, and otherwise. All right, because we cover it all here. So I honestly don't know if I would accept a job at ESPN because ESPN was one of the drivers to get me to do what I do. I hated what they had become. TMZ Sports 2.0. They're, they're MTV except for even though MTV doesn't play music anymore, ESPN still has sports highlights, right? It's just, it's a gossip reg now and I don't like it. 
So anyway, the point is, is that here we are on a Wednesday night, and I'm happy to bring you guys another great episode with a great conversation, a great guest, some headlines. We'll discuss that. We'll break it down. And we're going to have some fun. That's the point of the fan show. That's the point of me here. As I go through Full Sail University at the Dan Patrick School of Sports Casting, uh, they're teaching us a lot about our ourselves, self-branding, branding, branding uh, building our brand, uh, this, that, and the other. And I've been able to apply a lot of tools to that. So, yes, there is football outside of football. For those of you that feel like you're finally getting to scratch that itch, get that fix tomorrow night, you're, you're missing out. Plain and simple. Ask ask anybody who is a fan of indoor or arena football. They will tell you that it is football without any of the extra. Sure, the field is only 50 yards in length instead of 100. And the width is about a third of the size. uh, of the. So it's football on a hockey rink. There is no... There's out of bounds, but there's not lines. There's padded walls that these guys run into. And the game is fast-paced. It's exciting. It's high-scoring. And there's no drama. There's just, there's, there's not, there's no time for that. And these guys are competitive. They're professional athletes. So if you don't know about the world of indoor or arena football, I, I feel bad for you. I really do. Because I just got done covering the IFL and the NAL and it was a blast. It needs more support and I can only give it so much. But you guys that tune in that you know about it, you know that this is where you get your news, your headlines and everything else for it. So while others of you are finally coming up for air, (gasps) football's back tomorrow. Yeah, it's been around. I I honestly could have used a bit of a longer break between football and football. But hey, you know, we're going right from one week into the next from one football into another. So you guys are missing out. You really are. So let's go ahead. Let's get to it. Let's talk some football. Let's talk some battle bots. Matt Spurk, the man behind the Kraken, is on tonight. Very excited. He's actually been one that has commented on some of my football-related posts. So this is a double whammy. This is a special, special tonight because we're going to talk battle bots. Yes, yes. But we are also going to talk football because tomorrow night is NFL season kickoff. Falcons, Eagles. Uh, And that will take us perfect segue into today's headlines because there is some news that you need to know. Headlines, of course, brought to you by the good people at Dynamite Enterprises. By good people, I mean my man, Ethan. If you need anything customized, apparel, trophies, banners, tablecloths, shoes, socks, like if you got tired of the swoosh on your Nike socks. Well, he can make you some custom socks of a logo that you can (laughs) just be proud of and not feel like you need to cut off and or burn or otherwise. And I don't feel like getting into that in the headlines today. But anyway, you need to hit up Ethan, dynamiteenterprises.com or ethan at dynamiteenterprises.com. Tell him that you heard about him on the fan show and he's going to help hook you up. He's going to make sure that that product that that you want, that merch you want to sell is perfect. Speaking of perfect, I'm excited. Uh, announced yesterday on my personal Facebook page that we are putting in a small order of hats. Finally, fan show hats. You guys have wanted them. You've waited. You've been very patient. I appreciate that. Uh, it looks like we're going to order a dozen. Most have been claimed. So if you would like to secure one, you need to hit me up on one of the many forms of social media that we have with the fan show. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, email website, whatever. I mean, if you're not following me on one of those, I can't help you. But please, if you would like a hat, it will be a limited quantity this first time around to get a feel for the market, see how how badly you guys want them, how much you like them, and then we'll start kicking them out more and more. So uh, if you want a hat, get a hold of me. These will be adjustable. We're not doing fitted ones because I hate playing the guessing game, and so do you guys. So these are going to be your classic mesh trucker hat style, but uh, I believe we're going with a Richardson brand, very popular, and it will be a left panel logo hat, so you're going to look styling and profiling with the fan show gear courtesy of Dynamite Enterprises. So headlines, today we had an update, uh, one of many, and that is that Philadelphia Eagles rule quarterback Carson Wentz out for the season opener. So what that means is that the man 
that took down Tom Brady, although that's not really what happened. Your Super Bowl 52 MVP, most valuable player, Nick Foles, is going to be at the helm to start off your 2018 campaign. And then we will see what the word it what the word is on Mr. Wentz going into the season. I feel bad for him, I really do, but Eagles fans, you got to I don't think this should make you feel nervous. Foles didn't look that great in preseason, but at the same time, you know, this is a man who seems to excel when least expected. I don't know if there's a high expectation on him tomorrow night, but Falcons Eagles is your matchup to kick off the 2018 NFL season. Uh, Another update was that Earl Thomas is returning to the Seahawks. That's right. Uh, He has ended his offseason holdout. He will rejoin the Seahawks. If he plays the entire season for Seattle, I believe he will retire. Uh, But I wouldn't be surprised if they released him or if they traded. I, I don't know. There's a lot that could happen with this. But he has ended his holdout. He will rejoin the squad to start the 2018 season. Le'Veon Bell and contract discussions still uh, have gotten nowhere with the Steelers. So fantasy owners and Steelers fans alike are pretty nervous about that. Understandably so. Another update out of Seattle is that the rookie, Shaq Griffin, the one-handed man, the man who has done exceptional in the Uh, Just everything that he has done, his journey, so incredible. So happy for this guy. If I ever owned a Seahawk jersey, it would be a Griffin jersey. And the irony, the best part about it, what number does he wear? (laughs) 4 I might buy my wife one. Just be like, he's a good player. I think you'll like this one. And it'll be number 49. And I'll be very happy about that. We'll see, though. So he is to start at linebacker for the Seahawks week one. Congratulations. That gets the applause button. And then we do have BattleBots. They're doing the replay tonight of the USA versus the world. And that'll be fun. I forget. Was there bonus content on that? I'm going to find out right now. Let's see what we've got here. BattleBots, where are you? BattleBots. Bonus content is there. Let's see. Yes, the bonus segment on the Science Channel is the robot combat around the world. That's all it says on the official BattleBots post. But yes, you will get to see if you missed it uh, Friday because you were starting your Labor Day weekend early. Perfectly understandable. These fights did not count towards their regular season record or the potential of them getting into the 16 whatsoever. It was just for fun, just for shoots and giggles. You will get to see Blacksmith against Warhead, which, not to spoil it, this is probably one of the best fights I've seen from blacksmith disappointed with the outcome though i will say that much captain shredderator one of the most american bots we have they take on vanquish uh, so it is your classic revolutionary war bout between america and the uk and we have hypershock and reality saw blaze and endgame and red devil from canada against the kraken from usa so if you missed it Tune into the Science Channel tonight to catch the replay. That'll be a lot of fun. And then we'll have an all-new episode of BattleBots coming up Friday. So Matt Spurk of Kraken is going to join me on the show. Very excited to have him on. I'm trying to think if there was any other headlines. Uh, the, the Nike thing, there's just there's so much more in the world to be caught up with and, and fired up about. You know, I... It's an apparel company, folks. Come on. They make shoes and they make jerseys and whatever. But I just really think that people need to not get so triggered about stuff. You know, I had sort of an epiphany, a revelation, if you will, the other day. And that is that, you know, I've worked in call centers for quite a while. Not not by choice. I mean, obviously, I applied to work there. It's a Flexible schedule, steady income, but man, uh, people that have never worked in a call center, I feel like it should be a requirement out of high school that you should have to have had three jobs for at least a year 
before you can go on to do anything else with the rest of your life. And that is, of course, uh, the service industry, be it a uh, restaurant or fast food, call center, and then, of course, uh, retail. And that is so that you understand when you are in those environments as a customer, just what those employees have to go through. So anyway, um, we've, we've lost ourselves when it comes to human interaction. We have self-checkouts now. We have everything we can do, we do through an app. And we can order things from home and have them delivered to us. We, we don't have to interact with people unless we're damn near forced to. And I think that's why we've lost touch with a lot of things that made being a human being great. I mean, honestly, we're just going to hop on a soapbox here for a moment. But if you think about it, back in the days where you had to go and have like a small conversation with the person at the grocery store, at the check stand, um, you know, it, it could have made it, it could have been something small to make you feel better about yourself or your day. You could have had a great conversation, gotten to know a complete stranger, uh, you know, and then when you had to just go out into the world and interact with people in order to accomplish something. Uh, they have a kiosk at McDonald's now. You you don't even have to order from a real person. The more human interaction we take out, the more we hate human interaction when we're we're forced to have it and that is what i think is the problem with the world today people get so angry so quickly because we we have no empathy no sympathy for other people anymore because why why would we we don't have to interact with people outside a a keyboard or you know having to go to this place or that if you've got it set up right you can have pretty much everything delivered to your door And taken care of for you at the touch of a button. Technology is a beautiful thing, but it's also a terrible catalyst of things that I feel has probably done more harm than good when it comes to the world today. So I still try to interact with people as best I can, but it's people are at their very worst when they are talking to a complete stranger over the phone or in their car. Uh, and, And I think that's just because the human element is at its best in those situations right uh we are so quick to get angry and we want to just yell at the first person because we've lost that connection with the fact that human beings are human beings too and they have emotion and whatever it's not an automated system it's not something that's done automatically so take it upon yourself to go out and just interact with some people get get that connection back okay be better people tomorrow than you were today Or I guess start doing that today so that you're better than you were yesterday. And with that, we're going to go to a commercial break when I come back. Matt Spurk of Kraken of BattleBots. We are going to talk some BattleBots and football and really anything else that comes up. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. You're listening to The Fan Show, your home for all things football and nonsense. My special guest tonight, Farouk. Farouk, welcome. He's no expert, but here's the thing. Football and nonsense. It's what he brings. Sports talk with a twist. It's the Fan Show! Do you know him as Kevin from the League? It is none other than very funny Steve Ranazisi. 99% of the population doesn't know who I am, but the 1% do. They yell and scream inappropriate things at me in public. Kyle Ray, Kyle, welcome. And I was like, wow, I think we just saw the whole Super Bowl, Phyllis. <laughs> it's like that scene in The Simpsons. Like, why rent the movie? I just saw the best part. Funny man, Brad Williams. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, no, I flew in just for your podcast. <laughs> I've heard about this podcast. I've heard it's fantastic. It's Mac and Farva, but they are my special guests tonight. Steve Lemmy, Kevin Heffernan. I was in Mexico for 10 weeks in a Speedo. Like, that's, uh, that, that was me going to work. I was putting on a Speedo. Like Farva is the most fun to play, and it was a blast to do that again, to do Farva again. So then the makeup artist had to put Vaseline on your body, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and then put the powdered sugar on top of that. Is your name really Richard Siemens? Listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night on Spreaker.com or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. 
right, ladies and gentlemen, people of Fan Nation, it is time to release the Kraken, one of the most popular and fan favorite bots uh, to ever hit the battle box on Battle Bots, and that is a tongue twister right there, is Kraken, and that is Matt Spurk, who my guest tonight, joining me to talk all about season three and everything else, uh, making his debut. Welcome, Matt. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. Thank you very much for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, it, I feel like it took a little bit longer than expected because I remember even when I was at the tapings, uh, Greg Munson said, a, a guest that you're probably going to want to have on the show is the guy behind Kraken because I, I guess before I got there for the media days, you guys were, were just winning the crowd over. I mean, it, it seems like it's sort of the the odd ducks, <laughs> if you will, that were really making a splash in season three between yourself, Duck, uh, Sharko even, and then Huge, which I don't know what you would categorize them as. But what what is your takeaway then? Is that an accurate assumption um, for Kraken and season three of BattleBots? Uh, yes, I think one of the things a lot of the producers were asking for as we applied was just to come up with something different. You know, they, they already have a tombstone. They already have a bite force and a witch doctor, a hyper truck. They already have those robots, and they're they're very good and cool. And the teams are established. So they wanted something new, and that was a challenge for a lot of us new people to come and bring something new and interesting. So I think a lot of those teams you talked about were something different, something people hadn't seen before, and um, you know just just trying to push the envelope of, of what works and what's cool looking. Yeah, and you guys took it a step further because Ed Robinson and Sharko. So Sharko is very much exactly what you would expect from a bar uh, from a bot called uh, Sharkoprian or Sharko for short. But he didn't really play dress up, so to speak. Uh, duck doesn't really look much like a duck, with the exception of the beak on the uh, the lifter on the front. And again, no uh, costume. Now, Witch Doctor, though, I feel like you guys almost took a page out of their book. What inspired you to, one, uh, go the full hundred when it came to the, the bot design, the, the gimmick, and then the costume? And how did you settle on what the bot was going to look like and then, of course, the costume design? So um, it's funny that you bring up Witch Doctor because uh, they're actually really good friends of ours. We've been competing with them for years with our smaller bots, um, one- and three-pound robots. And so when it came time for us to apply to the show, um, we were emailing back and forth with them, you know, what works, what are they looking for, what, what can we do to get in there? And um, they, they were the ones like, you know, do the costumes, they love that, you know, come up with interesting robot designs. So I actually came up with like two or three different iterations of the robot and I sent it over to them and got their feedback before we finally, I drew a hand sketch of Kraken, um, the pretty similar to what we saw in the show. And they're like, dude, if you can make that, you'll definitely get on. So that was, they were instrumental in giving us that feedback to get started. Yeah, I imagine a lot of you guys that are located near each other, there's a lot of bot builders in Florida, I've found out. It seems California, Florida, and then, of course, you've got Leanne Cushing in Boston keeping it real, holding it down up there. Um, but for you guys in Florida, uh, is this something where is there like a, a big bot following in that area, or you guys just all happen to live in Florida and have the same thing in common of competitive bot fighting? Uh, Florida is very fortunate that we've had events running basically continuously um, since the show went off the air back in, you know, the original um, Comedy Central show went off the air back in, like, 2001. There's been a bot fight. Basically, I don't know that we've had a year where we haven't had some type of robot fighting um, between that time. And I think that's where you see kind of these hotbeds in California, Florida, and up in New England, Northeast area. Um, that's where events have been occurring regularly. So builders tend to pool where those events are occurring where they can see it live. Because it is a different experience seeing it live than seeing it on the TV. Yes, I will uh, support that uh, 110%. It is quite phenomenal to see it uh, right in front of your very eyes. Uh, because unless you've got theater-quality sound in your home, which even then I don't know how well it would come through, which is some of the the sounds from the battle box and, the, uh, my God, the smell. You can't smell through your TV, but there are some things that really just sort of set the scene for you if you've ever seen a bot fight 
in person. Now, for you guys and Kraken, uh, it, it is a grappler bot and actually a very effective one. Now, I don't know if it's because people look too much into maybe the gimmick side of it that they kind of sell the actual ability of the bot short, which would be a mistake on their end. But let's be honest, you know, your bot is is a grappler and it is done very well for itself when it gets into the kind of fight that it wants the problem is though is that you guys compete against a variety of different designs some of which you know uh have a, a weapon and it's a weapon that's much quicker than what you guys can you know sort of do for yourselves did you want a grappling bot when you set out to compete in battle bots or is that just sort of how it turned out like where where did the design come from initially um, yeah, so it was, it was one of those, um, so we're a pneumatic crusher, which is different. No one's, normally crushers are powered by hydraulics, um, which are traditionally slower, but more powerful. But, uh, I wanted a crusher, make something different. So I was thinking if we could make a crusher that would grab onto something quickly and, and hold them, um, you know, that would be more effective. Um, so we kind of were playing around with different ideas like that, kind of come up with different shapes for what the bot could look like and it kind of all came together it's hard to explain you know it wasn't one event where i said oh i'm going to do this it was you know a series of iterations that kind of led us to that yeah absolutely and i think you know it's uh i'll be honest when i watched the desperado tournament i thought it was going to be one of those times where you're like oh my god i cannot believe what just happened because you guys gave the great Don Hudson is scare. I mean, you could see it on television, even if he won't admit it himself. But, I mean, you guys really had, I don't know if it was your game plan, but it was quite entertaining to see that whole thing transpire. Yeah, I mean, we went in, um, we had a strategy at the very beginning to try and use the saws and kind of hide behind the saws, the slots in there, and hope he'd get hung up like he did in his end game match. Um, but he was so fast, and he's such a good driver. That we, I abandoned that strategy in the first 10 seconds, and then it would just point the robot towards him and go. And, um, you know, we were able to stay on him for most of the match. Unfortunately, you know, at the beginning of the tournament, we had a lot of reliability issues, and they caught up to us in that lockjaw match. We ended up um, motor cut out on us, and we spun around and exposed the backside to Donald, and, and he was able to take advantage. But it was great to finally see the robot actually work and do what it was supposed to do and, you know, really control the fight. That's what it's designed to do. Yeah. Now with you guys, you use the environment of the battle box to your advantage. Um, but even still, I mean, uh, you corrected me. You're not necessarily a grappler, but more of a crusher, but the, some of these bots are built, I mean, you know, rock solid. So it's going to be a little bit hard to crush. And you guys, I don't know how much, power you're outputting as far as if you got into sort of a tug of war who's going to win that uh, nine times out of ten but was it sort of part of the plan when you came up with the design and decided how you wanted it to function that you're like you know i will use the environment to my advantage because you do have the kill saws out there you've got the hammers the pulverizers and you've got the the screws uh i mean bronco goes out there and its goal is to try to flip somebody outside the box every time because if they do it's a knockout but for you guys uh was that part of the strategy did you did that dawn on you at any point in time uh yeah i mean uh, obviously anytime you're a control bot you want to use the arena to your advantage um and we're outputting twenty thousand pounds of force so um we thought we that would be plenty and so we completely underestimated the strength of some of these robots and how tough their armor was going to be because we didn't we weren't able to penetrate anybody um, and, uh, it was one of those, you know, 20,000 pounds you think would be enough. We got plans for next season to upgrade that, to get it up around 60,000 pounds. See if we actually can crush somebody. But yeah, it's, it's, as long as we have control of them and, and us being able to hold on to them for 30 seconds gives us the ability to take them, you know, all around the arena. And, um, with my kids on board on the team, you know, it was great. They were running the hammers. It was like, all right, guys, I'm going to try and get into the hammers and you guys smash them. Now, of course, the season is uh, completed as far as it's taping, and we're watching the finished result play out now, and I assume you guys have, like, a watch party. So I'll ask you the question that I've been asking uh, recently on the show, which is, you know, we're getting closer and closer to the tournament, you know, the, the point of this season, the point of the regular season. Do you feel 
watching from home where we are now in the season, do you feel like Kraken has earned a spot in the 16? Um, I would say no. Um, we were, uh, we're one and three at this point. Um, so, you know, they told us whenever we started the, before they even started filming that you had to be three and one, a two and two robot wasn't necessarily going to get into the tournament, you know, or wasn't likely to get into the tournament unless they were very quality losses and the wins were something exceptional. And we were one and three. So, um, we basically went into the USA versus the world fight knowing that we're basically out. And uh, I just wanted to go out and put it all on the line there. Okay, well, we will see how the judges, you know, the decision committee scores it because, you know, record isn't everything. Now, of course, you want to have the best record possible to leave no doubt, but you guys, I think, have been entertaining, which as a television show does account for some portion of the weight, and then you guys have been a fan favorite and you guys have been an effective buy you know i mean i i loved uh, what ed robinson and sharko were able to do out there in the battle box and i know that it's not your your classic vertical or horizontal spinner or flipper or whatever else seems to be the trending weapon of choice but you guys are entertaining i will i will say that very much it was very uh fun to see you guys down there i wish we would have gotten in on-camera, in-person interview, but don't worry, I've got a list of you guys for Season 4 that I plan on uh, having a a good sit-down talk with you because uh, it's been great to get to know all of you guys. Were you at Dragon Con this last weekend? Did Kraken make an appearance? I was not, actually. I was uh, down here in Florida. Um, We had uh, an event last weekend in Orlando. We have an event um, Friday here at the local Makerspace, and... uh, yeah, we're trying to get around and trying to show people cracking. Because um, I think a lot of the, the size of these robots is kind of what's lost on television. They look like little RC cars, but, you know, they're 250 pounds. You know, Kraken's three foot in every dimension. I mean, these are big machines going out there um, and doing battles. So um, it, it's once they see them, they kind of get a sense of the scale, and it gives you a new sense of appreciation for the energy and, and what's happening in the box. So one thing I got to ask you, it's probably the most important question that I will ask you in this segment today. I need 100% honesty. And in, in your free time, when when you are, you know, maybe just need a little something to do uh, to entertain yourself, how often do you put Kraken out on the street and chase around the neighborhood, dogs, cats, or even children? <laughs> so... Uh... <laughs> We have uh, we have Kraken. We also have our, our old heavyweight. It was our my very first bot I built back in, uh, must have been 2002, I guess. And uh, so I've had them, they spar the driveway from time to time. It, it's fun. I let the kids drive, you know, Kraken. The other one will drive my old bot, which I call Old Iron. And they'll, they'll fight each other in the driveway and stuff. And um, I teach robotics class. I let the kids there drive Kraken. It's a fun robot to drive. Yeah, I if if I had a Kraken bot here, I mean we have squirrels everywhere. I would chase those things around all day long. I would I would make it like it, from two to three every day. I'm going to chase squirrels around with my bot. <laughs> you you would be quickly out of squirrels if, if they saw this giant sea monster thing <laughs> driving around chasing them. I think that scare away the squirrels very quickly. Uh, so for you guys then, obviously you had success as far as the the reception, you know, amongst the fans and, of course, your fellow bot builders because you guys all sort of have your own unique approach, which is great. I really encourage that. It's always fun to see uh, what's, what's new and what's going to be trending uh, that season. Huge, I think, has been uh, fantastic to watch and how it's changed. Uh, maybe the the world of battle bots but for you guys sounds like you're sticking with your design you're just going to modify it a bit for the next season Um, was that uh, decision left solely to you or is this like a team thing where you guys get together you brainstorm and you you decide if you want to keep uh keep the gimmick or if you guys want to move on in a different direction uh so all decisions in our house have to go through the big boss um my wife and uh (laughs) so uh she, uh, I think everyone was was on board with keeping cracking the way it was. You know, similar, just kind of tweaking it and making it better. You see, you saw this season, you know, the bots at the beginning of the tournament that kind of came back and just kind of tweaked last season's bot. Fight Force, uh, Minotaur, Tombstone, Broco, all those machines 
performing very well, very good records. Uh, Sawblade is another one doing very, very well. Um, and they just kind of upgraded last season's design. Um, and so they're doing very well. And then Robots to kind of start over from scratch kind of got off to a rough start. Um, so we want to kind of learn from, from those mistakes and, and just kind of make incremental upgrades and try and get better. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to know from you is that for a lot of you bot builders, you know, this is a, a hobby that is very serious just because it is televised. It is uh, a brand that you guys are huge supporters of and you want to keep it going. Um, and so for some, just being a part of it is enough. But then, of course, you have guys like Don Hudson and Ray Billings where it's like, you know, their their eyes are on the prize, right? So for you, I don't know if, if that's the intent or if you just go out there to have some fun. I know that the prize money may not be enough to sort of replenish what you spent on your bot. But as a hypothetical, you know, if Kraken was to go through this thing and win it all, like what, what sort of sense of accomplishment, I guess just overall feeling would that give you as a bot builder, knowing that you did it with the type of bot that you did? Uh, yeah. So that's when we, when we applied for the show, we said, you know, I was talking to my family, my wife and, and my uh, parents and my in-laws and everything. And I was like, you know, it's my dream to be on battle bots. And when we were finally accepted onto the show, it was like this huge, just, um, a sense of accomplishment to, you know, this, your lifelong dream is about to be realized. And then it was kind of this realization that, well, there's a lot of work to do to make that dream actually, you know, become a reality. You, you've just taken the first small step in, in what's going to be a big process. And, uh, the whole family was super supportive. We were able to accomplish, build this really amazing robot. We're so proud of in such a short time. And then to go out there and compete and, and for it to, you know, struggle, but we never gave up. We kept trying to get better and to do something that was, you know, something different. We got it to work and really show that we had something great. I mean, that was, that was it, you know, so it was, that was the dream. We were able to accomplish it. And then of course, whenever you have a dream and you, you know, you're able to accomplish that dream and live that dream, then you're kind of faced with when we got back, it was, well, what's next? You know, the dream was to get on BattleBots. We're on BattleBots. So now the, the new dream is, is to go on and, um, build off the success that we had this season and to go in and to go far in the tournament, if not win the whole thing, you know. Um, I think our robot could do really well. I think we're something a little bit different. Um, I think we could really challenge a lot of the top teams because we're something they haven't had to face before. That's awesome. I love hearing that. I'm glad that you guys are sticking with it and pushing through it. You know, it's it's one thing to accomplish a dream. It's another thing to accomplish it and then set your sights on another one and start to work towards that one so yeah don't don't give up don't let up because you guys are like i said very entertaining to see out there um now you are one of the uh rare occasions that i have here one of the special breeds and that is that you are a competitive bot fighter and then a fan of football and i mean realistically if you looked at your calendar week to week coming up Tuesday would be your only night off because you've got the replay of BattleBots on the Science Channel Wednesday, Thursday night football, Friday is a brand new episode of BattleBots, Saturday would be college football, Sunday football, and Monday, Monday night football. So uh, what's it like in your household this time of year right now? Have you even thought about how you're going to handle everything going on? Uh, so for our household, you forgot a couple things. We also, <laughs> I'm a soccer coach. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm coaching soccer. Oh boy. And then I also teach a robot club and that's every other Monday night. So, uh, we've got a, we've got a full schedule as well as, well as we're, um, still competing with our small bots at local events in Florida. And, uh, you know, so it's a, it's a busy schedule. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's this time of year, it's, it's always fun. I like being busy. It's better than being bored. Um, but it's also craziness. And then I, I, by, uh, you know, the holidays, I'm, I'm thankful for the break that the holidays give us. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. Uh, the labor day break was, was very nice. Now it was an entertaining episode yourself included, but yeah, it was nice to know that I wasn't missing an episode that, uh, held a whole lot of weight going into the, the remainder of the season. But now the NFL season is about to kick off. Are you a Florida native through and through? You root for your one of, I guess, three local teams there, or do you have one close near and dear to your heart? Um, so I'm originally from uh, Pennsylvania. Oh. So uh, 
Uh, yeah, so my teams are um, Steelers for pro and Penn State for college. Wow, doesn't get much better than that. So you've got quite the the plateful this season now. Uh, Penn State looking good for the season. Steelers, though, they are a little bit nervous about what's going to happen with Le'Veon Bell. You have any opinion on that? Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm nervous for Le'Veon Bell as well because I've got him on my fantasy team. So Le'Veon, <laughs> find that contract. Get your butt to camp. Get the practice. I got points I need. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Steelers, I think, they've got a good backup. Um, James Conner, I think he'll he'll pound the rock okay. Um, they still have Antonio Brown and Ben Roethlisberger, so I think they'll be okay. Um, they play the Browns the first week, so I think they can get by without Bell. Um, but we'll see going into the season how long he holds out and what that does for the Steelers. So if the Steelers were to lose to the Browns, uh, I mean, granted everything going on for the Steelers in the offseason and how much the, the Browns have been hyped going into the season, is that anything, like, would you be able to let yourself be seen in public the next day if, if that happened? Like, just how, how much weight does that game carry to start your season? Oh, that game's huge. Um, I think if <laughs> Bell doesn't. If Bell doesn't play and the Steelers lose that game to the Browns, pay the man whatever he wants, get him on the field. Um, but if they're they're able to hold off the win and win convincingly, like I think they will, um, then I think that kind of weakens uh, Bell's stock a little bit. You know, kind of puts him on the back foot, especially if, if Connor, um, James Connor, able to put up you know, hundred yards or so. I, I think they'll be that really hurt uh, Bell. Yeah, I, uh, I'm nervous for what player holdouts uh, their impact has on teams. Earl Thomas is back with Seattle, as reported earlier today. I don't know what effect, if any, it'll have, but uh, time will tell. So, Matt Spurk, I do want to thank you so much for coming on and talking Kraken, BattleBots, football. I mean, really, everything that you could want from an episode of The Fan Show. But uh, sorry it took so long to get you on, but well worth the wait. And best of luck the remainder of the season, and I'm sure we'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You take care. Tell everyone I said hello, and we'll uh, I'll probably <laughs> give you a shout this weekend during football and talk some smack, all right? Yeah, very good. If you got any tips. Oh, my other running back is uh, Jarek McKinnon, so he's on IR now. So if you got any running back sleeper picks for me, let me know. There is an article that just went up today on thefanshow.com under the Fantasy tab. My guru, Brandon, he actually, I said, hey, do you have anything for me going into the season? He said, oh, well, I was going to wait until after week one because he normally does weekly waiver wire targets and pickups. But I said, how about if you're having some injury woes, like you drafted McKinnon or Bell or another player that uh, you know you did it just a bit too soon – and now you're worried about your whole season. He's like, I got you. So he put out an article today. It is a great read. Should help you a little bit. Uh, So go and check that out on thefanshow.com. That's perfect. Thank you very much. I will do that. All right. You have a great night, Matt. Thank you very much. Thanks. You too. All right. That was Matt of the Kraken. Always fun to talk battle bots and football anytime we get the chance to. So I really do love and appreciate these moments and episodes but yes uh, as i mentioned as i was going to mention once we got finished there uh there is content back on the fanshow.com including my debut article for uh eastern washington university the eagles after their big dominant uh, i mean just <laughs> they really put it on central washington university the wildcats so I wrote an article to recap that should set the tone and the stage for uh, my content involving them moving forward into the season. They have a game this weekend against Northern Arizona, hoping to make it 2-0. and But, of course, you can see video content on the YouTube page. The videos are also available under the Videos tab of thefanshow.com. I'm working on updating the galleries right now, uh, but there is a 
photo gallery and you can select Fan Show Tour 2017, 2018 uh, when I covered uh, Tin Fest last year, a great music festival. And then uh, really, you know, you can check out the alumni, people that have been on the show. It's a lot of fun. So we are working on getting the website nice and spruced up. We'll have an official relaunch of the site uh, with a lot more content on the show's uh, three-year anniversary. And that will be September the 10th. So mark your calendars and make sure that you uh, make a special notice for that date because we are going into our fourth season, but it will be happy birthday number three to the fan show. Crazy to think. Uh, But yes, from 2015 to 2016, 2016 to 2017, 2017 to 2018. So we are going into season number four. And it, it, uh, is, it will be our third birthday. Thank you all, Fan Nation, so much. Go and check out Brandon's article under the Fantasy tab. Uh, you can read my article on EWU Eagles under the EWU tab. That's right. They're so special. They get their own tab on the website. But there's an episode archive. Any episodes that you may have missed, the most recent one is always there under the Listen Live tab, which is where you can listen live if you are available from 7.30 Eastern to 8.30 Eastern or 4.30 to 5.30 Pacific every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And Spreaker.com also lets you listen live as well. Episode archive, links to all the major social media. So if you're not sure of where to find the fan show in some manner or facet, thefanshow.com. Nice and simple, straight to the point, thefanshow.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, subscribe, iTunes, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Spotify. Give us a review on the ones that you can. We always love to hear the fan feedback and make sure that we are doing the best we can to provide you with the best content week in and week out. Shout out to BattleBots, the NAL, the IFL, and everything that we do here on the fan show, football, nonsense, and beyond. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners, and remember, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his one player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.